I've lost seven, bi six babies, and they, they sadly died within days of being born. Um, we didn't know why. Um, we didn't know we inherited this disease because it's passed from mother to mother. Um, and sadly, we didn't know till my son Edward um, was diagnosed at age four and a half. Um, he was diagnosed with Lee's disease, and he survived till he was twenty-one. So yes, I've lost seven children with this cruel disease. You describe it as a cruel disease, it, it surely is. Just give me I, an idea of how long it was, I mean, and what it was like for you to, to lose one baby after another, but, but simply not to know why. It's, your pregnancy is fine, you have a normal pregnancy and then you, you don't think anything could go wrong. And then, like at nine months, and then to be told your baby's got like a there was acidosis in the baby's blood, and that continue is a pattern uh, throughout the rest of the babies. Um, the post mortems didn't show up anything, and um, obviously nobody knew what was actually going on with these babies because of both girls and boys. Tell and me, the babies were very sick within the first minutes. Tell me what it was like that moment when you first discovered that actually it was you that was passing this condition on to your babies, to your children. What, what was that moment like? Um, I don't... I, I, that's our question. Um, I don't think I thought like that. Um, I mean, my main thought was to keep the son, my son well and healthy at that time obviously you can't put blame because that's a long cycle of would blame each mother because this comes down from mothers to mother so you couldn't really point blame at anybody or i don't feel i, I was a blame myself sure um and it's and obviously we're just unlucky and and i've seen the pictures with you and edward you, you made the point that uh, he died finally at the age of 21, how difficult was his life? Edwards had a good quality of life until he got to 20. I mean, obviously, there was bouts in his life where he was, um, obviously, had seizures, and they were very bad, um, permanent intensive care and everything. But uh, when Edward was well, he was well, and he enjoyed his school, he enjoyed his friends, and... Um, he loved his girls and um, obviously but when he became to when he turned 20 obviously we're going into new territory with Edward and we were doctors in Newcastle were struggling because there isn't another child a young person with the same disease and so there isn't a cure and there wasn't treatment so he was in dreadful pain and he would scream and scream for six hours at a time a and, and, and MPs the last time MPs seem to have listened to, to compelling accounts like that. They have just voted in the last 15 or 20 minutes to allow this to go ahead. What are your thoughts on that? Because throughout the course of the day, we've heard uh, people who object. They talk about designer babies. They talk about a slippery slope. What, are yeah. your, what do you say <laughs> to people who say things like that, given your experience? Well... The people who have like made comments, and I've heard the comments throughout the day on radio and TV, and obviously um, over the last few days, um, you haven't walked in my shoes, and obviously you haven't buried seven children. Um, this is a, this is absolutely brilliant. These children won't inherit this disease. It is cruel. There isn't a treatment or cure. Um, these parents would have had a baby, and the, that baby's going to die. This is this is the best they can have, um, and so I, I used to judge whether this is right or wrong until you've been there. So, for for all those people who are affected by this, you think this is a really major, significant step forward that this has been passed, and potentially they'll have this technique available to them. This is a this is going to be a. A lifeline it's a it's a like a miracle of hope for people it's like couples can go and plan their children and and 
like I've, we, a lot of people take for granted, you know, you, people have children and, the, you know, everybody takes them for granted. People with mitochondrial disease, you know, that they live in constant fear uh, in case they passed it on. So this is, this is new and this is going to be great for them.